Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcar.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. This is KY4BDP for our 2019 year in review. This particular video I pulled out of all the ones that we did this year to represent working out in the field and in particular working on the road. I do travel quite a bit for my job. This particular week I was in New Jersey setting up the octopus antenna and I just I have a lot of fun doing ham radio when I'm on the road. I'm in a different location and I can try out new gear. So this was a really good video to represent that and with this particular antenna I always get people wanting to know what I'm doing because the antenna is unique enough that uh, most people have not seen one like it. Now the next video I'm moving to for the uh, year in review is a build. This was one of my first what I would call a big build because I don't build uh, very many things but I needed an HF antenna on multiple bands and kind of looked around watched a lot of videos and settled upon the high gain AV640 and actually built it in my driveway and ultimately mounted it which we'll see in just a few minutes but it's a multi-band antenna. It was a lot of fun to build and even though I'm not terribly handy and I have a difficult time sometimes just reading instructions when they're three-dimensional this one turned out really really well and I use this antenna to this day and uh, did I think a really good job of not only the build process but also mounting this antenna for use with my HF rig and this is just a quick little snippet of the mounting it's on the highest portion of my property and uh, ultimately uh, with the radials there I had to put flags on those just to make sure that you didn't run into them the antenna is about seven and a half feet up so it's not terribly high uh, we do have uh, someone to uh, mow our lawn and so this requires uh, the flags on those aerials uh, on the ground plane areas but uh, as a multiband antenna it's worked wonderfully. I use it for our 10 meter net as well as of course 40 on down. Some of the other bands I haven't used terribly uh, much but as a build I was really proud of it and uh, we plan to do more of those this year. Here is the Comet GP3 and the reason I included this in the year in review was it was a very simple build. It's 2 meters and 70 centimeters but um, as builds go very simple but this is a video that seems to catch a lot of views um, and I can't quite explain why that is I don't know if it's because it is simple and but we I do show using it on the net and so forth and how much better the signal was than before um, but uh, this surprised uh, KY4 CKP Chris and I because it's actually garnered quite a few views um, for an antenna you know a simple antenna build and of course this one's mounted on my deck on the back of the house. Now our next video here we I uh, highlighted because my brother really got into video editing and I was asking if he could do some certain things and so we started doing some picture in picture when we would mention another video that we had done or another product that we had done and so we were just starting to uh, utilize other elements within the video and this picture in picture is a good example of that but this video we had like three or four different things we had never done before uh, such as the zoom that you see here and then ultimately some some titles video titles would just show up in the video to uh, show pricing or to uh, correct something maybe that we had misstated in the video accidentally and so with the uh, zoom in feature that you're seeing here where uh, Chris is comparing this analyzer with the MFJ uh, and then here's another picture in picture where we kind of show it in use uh, it's not a still that's actually a, a video picture in picture um, we were learning how to utilize the editing software to good effect uh, to be able to uh, provide our viewers our subscribers with even more information as we go from product to product and then I think I've got a couple more examples of this coming up where we move to each 
of the analyzers that we were going to use in our upcoming series. So here we zoom in on the MFJ269 and then shortly uh, we'll have a pop uh, picture in picture pop in that will show using this particular unit. So here we show again the title where you can get an approximate price and then you can see that we have a picture in picture showing its usage and then we'll move over to the ICOM 7300 and basically do the same thing and so I love this video this is really our first time of doing these video insets these picture in pictures to provide even more information and to make the video more interesting to watch because if you just watch a static video sometimes it can get a little bit boring and so with these additional video elements we were hoping and I think it worked pretty well in fact that this ability to do picture in picture and whatnot uh, keeps you a little bit more interested in the video. Just learning these video packages, folks, is a daunting task sometimes, but Chris is really adept at this sort of thing. Now we pulled out, or I pulled out, the Abri antenna uh, unscientific test as just that, just getting out there and testing different hardware. And the Abri antenna has gotten a lot of press. Uh, uh, both on YouTube and some other uh, areas in the ham radio community because it's such a weird antenna. Um, so we thought, well, why not take it on the road a little bit, you know, not far from my house. Uh, KY4CKP was going to stay on my deck with a normal antenna. And then also one of the Bofangs with the Abri, and we were actually going to go back and forth, and he was able to do that really well. And then I just took my truck with my uh, regular radio on low power and went to different locations in my small town to see how far away I could get and whether or not one antenna would begin to fade out uh, compared to the other. And uh, it was kind of fun to get out and do this kind of a test. We'd never done anything like this before. And then at the very end, of course, we summarized. And I think ultimately we decided that the Abri antenna was a little bit better. We actually got slightly better lower noise and slightly better um, uh, characteristics from it, uh, but for the price, although it's not terribly expensive, uh, compared to some other nice antennas from Diamond and uh, the Nagoyas, uh, was it that much better, you know, given how long it is and so forth? And we decided, no, not really. It's not that much better, but it is novel and it does stow away easily. And so if you buy one of these antennas, we're not saying not to. Um, you'll probably like it because it does have a lower noise, higher, um, uh, brings up uh, the uh, the audio a, a little bit uh, for the same ranges, and uh, but just a little bit unwieldy. This was the 42-inch version, and uh, I think that's kind of where we left it. But just getting out there and testing products is a lot of fun. Now the next in, uh, video here that I pulled in is really to showcase uh, some things that my brother has done uh, showing how to use different software packages to become a total operator and to make it as easy as possible. Um, I know a lot of folks get on uh, HF and they definitely log their contacts and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, guilty of not doing that as much as I should but Chris is much better at that and he wanted to make it as easy as possible and so here he's showcasing the uh, the SDR radio in the top and by the way we're doing a picture in picture once again right so you see him in the top left using the full effect in the bottom he's got the logging info uh, and QRZ on the right hand side and when you use a big screen and you have the ability to use all of these packages at the same time it makes making HF context that much more fun and easier to log. And lastly I wanted to show one of the last videos we did of the year and the reason I'm showcasing this one please join a club. This is a, a great video showing a club activity and some of the club accomplishments. I was just reading our uh, web page and the club has accomplished many things this year and it's all due to the activity of members in the club. We actually have a pretty active club for such a small town uh, we have a, a pretty active membership and installing a new repeater is not trivial. Number one you gotta purchase it and when you're a small club you don't have a lot of funds and number two you want to install a repeater that has longevity and is going to allow you to use new features uh, coming down the road and with the uh, uh, Yesu repeaters and Fusion in particular we can do that. And then the other part of this video is getting up on that tower and replacing an antenna and showing that this is a necessary activity in most clubs and getting somebody to do that myself included uh, is again fun for me I like getting up there and you can see what the view is like and 
it's great to be able to replace some hardware with new so that your signal will be better and so you can get some experience actually uh, replacing equipments and again club activities folks it's not just being a loner in the ham radio environment it's also about how can you help out others in your community and I, I wanted to showcase that in this particular video because I think it's extremely important that we do just that we get involved we make new friends and we learn because there's so many mentors in these clubs you can learn a lot through YouTube and other channels but if you have an Elmer or two Elmers or more in your club it makes learning so much easier and the learning curve so much less and you get that real interpersonal contact and then lastly I'll end this particular video showing me up on that tower and again sometimes you gotta get outside of your comfort zone and uh, and uh, do things for others that uh, you know in the long term will be beneficial so I'm KY4 BDP we wanted to do this 2019 videos in review and why I hope you enjoyed the video KY4 CKP has got his as well and I'll end it there and we'll let KY4 CKP uh, tell you what he liked this year hello folks this is Chris KY4 CKP and uh, this is going to be my part of the year in review video. Um, Brian has, uh, has done his part and covered a few of the videos that he thought were of interest one way or another from the videos we've done so far this year. And I'm going to have my list. And uh, there's a couple of videos on his list. If he had not already covered them, uh, they would have been, been on my list as well. But I've got my list. And so uh, while we're on the Internet here, as you can see, let's hop on over to the El Cara YouTube channel and uh, I'm just going to cover a few of the videos that uh, that I liked uh, from this past year uh, you know from one category or another whether it was the technical challenge or or the project or, or whatever was was the video was covering so here we are on the uh, the El Cara YouTube channel I'm just going to go ahead and go into uh, the uh, the videos the main video kind of archive or library there uh, right before we do I just kind of wanted to briefly point out uh, look at that subscriber number Wow, 399. We are getting close to 400. Uh, another major milestone, and we really can't thank everybody enough for all the support we're getting on the channel. We're new to ham radio, and we're trying to learn ourselves and uh, maybe also help other hams and other new hams uh, find a club, find some information, and, uh, and just enjoy the hobby as much as we are able to. So, of course, we're going to be keeping our eye on that subscriber number. Uh, I'm sure... Uh, hopefully by the end of the year, it's not quite Christmas yet, but hopefully by the end of the year, uh, that'll be uh, starting with a four, and uh, and just it's just uh, exceeding all of our expectations. I think, and we're we're very happy about that. But let's go ahead and go into the video library section. Click on that, and we're just going to scroll down, just like you can do on any YouTube channel, of course. See all the videos they produce. We're just going to scroll down, and the first video I wanted to talk about uh, here uh, for just a, a minute or two was the vlog series and I know that this wasn't really uh, certainly our most popular video in terms of views or anything It's one of our earlier videos but there was a couple of things that I really liked about uh, the the series uh, three-part series the first thing was uh, that both Brian and I uh, KY4 BDP we were both uh, on the road we were both working that week out of town in hotels but we were able to set up some cameras set up a video conference and we were still able to uh, work on a video and uh, and then the second part of what I uh, liked about this was it was it was actually a pretty significant technical challenge uh, and part of that is that uh, you know I played around just a little bit with sound editing and, and video editing many many years ago uh, of course Brian and I both work in IT and we both uh, done things with computers for a lot of our lives uh, but I never did very much at all and that was a very long time ago. Uh, so getting into this for our uh, for our club uh, has meant learning some new skills. And we work with uh, Power Director from Cyberlink is our uh, video editor of choice, and it's a really good one. Uh, of course, most of you are going to be familiar with Adobe, and that's a great package too. And there's even some others. Uh, but learning how to do some things, learning some little tips and tricks, and and uh, the occasional little little. Uh, a fancy feature or, or whatever it is uh, you know take some time and this video and, and whenever you watch any any video on YouTube you know you, you probably can recognize good videos 
because of a combination of factors but you don't always kind of know what it took to get to that final product until maybe you actually get in and do it for yourself and uh, and this video was very technically challenging uh, I had some ideas and then we, we wanted to do some things and from the technical side I think it turned out well uh, and, I, and I think we both liked the little series again it's certainly not our most popular series but we liked it but that's that's why it's on my list it was we were doing a video while simultaneously on the road and uh, and then it was one of the early uh, technically challenging videos that we did so that's why it makes the uh, makes the cut for me so that was just the first video I wanted to talk about let's go ahead and go back to the main library here and we'll take a look now the uh, the next video I want to talk about is a little bit newer one <coughs> excuse me and it is the uh, the little 12 volt power meter video uh, and the reason that I like this video and the reason it's on my list uh, is because it's a simple project none of the components were very expensive but that's also one of the cool things about amateur radio there's a lot of do-it-yourself or kind of maker uh, aspects to this uh, I mean you can get into 3d printing and a lot of people do but uh, you can you can be hands-on you know if you want to be you can be as hands-on as you want and if you're not too uh, afraid to get near a soldering iron and some things um, all the years I've worked in computing I have touched a soldering iron a couple of times but I was never an electronics technician and uh, and I've replaced a few caps and done a few things but I'm not very good at it I'm sure uh, an expert can, can look at my work and, and shake their head but uh, but I can usually get things to work and uh, amateur radio has given me an opportunity to get into more of that I've always kind of wanted to do more of that just never did um, and so that's a big part of what the on the bench uh, series of videos is about is about showing maybe a kind of a cool little little project or, or something but also just hoping to either inspire or encourage folks you know maybe you should try your hand at doing something build an antenna you know we just released the 1.25 meter little Slim Jim build uh, this little little 12 volt I've got some other things that I'm going to use this 12 volt meter I've got another on the bench project uh, I'm going to try to get to uh, before too long but we're going to be producing these on the bench type type videos every so often uh, usually these are on a Wednesday release and our primary videos are Friday but uh, they're fun to do and uh, we're going to try to show some little little uh, fun build or something and uh, hopefully we'll get with uh, with Don AC4DM and, and whoever whoever uh, may even want to do one of these you know that's one thing with our YouTube channel folks here for the club uh, it, it's not just about uh, Brian and myself um, you know if anybody else has ideas for videos or if you'd like to to uh, to uh, get with us and work and, and maybe do a video work with a video um, it's a club channel right it's not really just he and I so just sort of you know keep that in mind we're certainly gonna gonna produce some videos and, and have fun with it uh, but yeah, this was this, this this whole concept of on the bench. Uh, I think is important, <clears throat> and it's something we wanted to uh, to share. And again, every so often we'll we'll put one of these together. So this was a fun little video, and that's that's one of the reasons why it's uh, it's on my list. So let's go ahead and go back to the uh, the library here, uh, and then the next video on my list, again, it's one of the slightly older ones, um, was the DX Commander antenna build, uh, the vertical uh, fan dipole. You know, is basically what this is. And the thing that, of course, that I liked about this, and it's kind of it's kind of similar to Brian's choice with uh, with his antenna build, is it, it it's not that hard of a project. Uh, Callum, uh, you know, M0MCX, he pretty much ships everything. There's directions. He's got many videos online about his antenna and how to build his antenna and, and so forth. It's his great little package. And for the money, it's been an awesome antenna. I've been using it now for several months. And I've hit Australia with it. I've hit Kuwait with it. I've hit all, you know, Russia and Brazil and, and just all kinds of places. And, and of course, all kinds of places around the United States and Canada as well. Um, so it's an awesome antenna for, you know, comparatively not that much money. Again, if you if you like to be and are willing to be a bit hands-on. Uh, and, uh, of course, we talked about that and we had a couple of videos on that. So, again, it's a kind of a combination. It was a hands-on build for me. And, and I've never been too shy about doing that kind of stuff. I like working with my hands and uh, and doing things like that and it's worked really well uh, you know in this day and age you know you you sometimes don't get what you pay for and sometimes things are over billed over advertised uh, I would say this is is better 
better better than expected. Uh, you look at that cost, and you might think, "Gosh, how could it something that's uh, you know less than two hundred dollars? How could that be any good?" Well, it's basically as good as the amount of time you put into it, and a little bit of care during the build process and some measuring, and it turns out great. So, uh, so that's why it makes my list. Uh, it was a fun build, and uh, and then it's just been a a really phenomenal uh, functioning antenna ever since to go on top of that. So we'll go back to the library, and the next video may not be a shock to anybody uh, if you're thinking about these kinds of things at all. Uh, but the next uh, the next video, the Nano VNA. <laughs> uh, if you kind of kind of look at our channel a little bit or anything. Uh, these two videos, uh, the first one and then the follow-up video, uh, these are by far our best performing videos. A very pleasant surprise. Uh, just just having to catch the right product, you know, at, at the right time more or less. And uh, and so we have uh, thousands of views for each one of these videos, which which is just awesome. Again, we're we're very uh, pleased and, and and thankful for all the support we're getting. Uh, but the thing about the video is uh, not so much that it's our our best performing couple of videos it's just a great little product <laughs> you know again this is a case where how can you get so much for so little I mean that's just almost never the case these days but for you know between 30 and a and hundred dollars right because there's different versions and variations and and, and kits and, and things you can get but for not that much money you can get a very decently functioning piece of equipment it's small, it's light, it's easy to transport. I've got mine in a little case. Uh, and, you know, to do some testing, in fact, I'd use this again for that 1.25 meter antenna build. You know, and I've got the uh, the Mini 60. We did a review on that little unit. Brian's got the MFJ. There's all kinds of, of, of testing gear and testing units and antenna testers out there. And, uh, and they can all have a place. And there's all kinds of price points to go with it. But for the money, and I think the kit that I bought, because it came with the little testing caps and and a couple of the uh, extension cables and things uh, and it does have a battery some of the, some of these you buy may not have a battery or whatever uh, but with everything I bought I think mine was on Amazon was $75 somewhere in that range still it's a phenomenal deal uh, for what it is so that's kind of why it makes makes my list is again it, it's sort of almost you know under promises and over delivers kind of thing uh, especially for the money so um, it's awesome that it's in one of our best performing videos, but it's really just the unit itself. It's just really a, a great little unit, and uh, and it's just you know it's a lot of fun to play with. You know when you look at Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and those kinds of things, they're not that expensive, and you can have a lot, lot of fun and a lot of projects and things you can do and play with them. And uh, and that's one of the things that sort of excites the mind, and it excites a lot of us in these various hobbies and things. So the Nano VNA, VNA that uh, that makes makes my list as well. Now my final pick. Might be a little bit self-serving, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's kind of the point of the list, I guess. Uh, Brian had his list, and this is my list. My final pick uh, for video, uh, and part of this is probably because he kind of he kind of stole one of the ones I definitely would have picked. He he put the uh, the tools for effective operating. You know that was a series, and he, he picked that last one. Uh, that was a fun series, and it's 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 the equipment I use, and it's the software I use all the time. So it was fun to to kind of you know share that with folks, and you know maybe inspire folks. To, uh, to use some of those tools or, or something similar to them. Uh, but he had already put that on his list, uh, and which was, of course, fine. I decided to put the, uh, the my mobile install on here. And we'll just jump to a part of the, of the video here somewhere. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's just an example, uh, which is certainly not unheard of, of course. You know, you not only can you enjoy the radio at the, at the shack, you know, you might decide you want to have it in your car. You might decide you want to go portable, go to the park, go camping. Uh, I do some of that, and I'm looking to do more of that, looking to do some actual POTA, POTA, parks on the air activity. Uh, either when I'm in my car, I can pull up into a park, and, and I could do it that way, but also you know, having a, a, a portable uh, radio that I could work with. And um, I, I, I had some pictures, and, and I had posted a, just a couple of things on sort of version one of my mobile install using some other equipment that I had, a, a Linko uh, SRT8 uh, radio and um, an antenna. The, uh, in fact, I uh, rigged up off a trailer hitch mount, the uh, Wolf River Coils. We did the, the video of that. I got everything working, and it worked. And the reason I did that without having to spend a whole lot of money uh, or, or, or time even was to see if I really 
really was going to enjoy or care about having mobile radio. You know, I was kind of like, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of money on something. You know, that kind of goes for the hobby as a whole. I'm not sure I want to spend a lot of money on something. Maybe I'm not really going to care. Maybe it's not going to be what I think it'll be, and, and you know, you know, then I'm trying to sell some used equipment or, you know, whatever it is. Or I got some equipment sitting in a, in a closet or something. And so I, I, I put that in my car for a few months and, uh, and played with it a little bit now and then and on some trips and some things and gave myself some time to decide, do I think I really want mobile in my, in my car? And I came to the conclusion, I think I do. I think I would like to have that. I'd like to have a nice setup. And uh, so then I thought, okay, well, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, get a little different radio and I'll get a different antenna and sort of streamline everything a little bit, make it a little bit more sort of automated and things. The, uh, you know, the ATOS 120 Alpha antenna from Yesu, uh, when you look into that, it, it's generally got a pretty good reputation. I think especially the, the relatively more modern versions. You know, they had the 100, the 120, 120A or whatever. And the, the biggest drawback, and I mentioned it in the video, was you, you have to really pay attention to your bonding and grounding. And if you get a good bonding ground setup, uh, it, it should work just fine. Uh, in most of the reviews when I was doing research, if they were negative at all, that was, that was the thing, is they were really struggling, even a few videos on YouTube, they were really struggling to get it to work because the radio was not really able to drive the... Uh, the antenna and that tends to come down to grounding and bonding but once you get it working it works pretty well I've made some DX contacts with this already uh, in fact in the video you know I showed one of my very first contacts was mobile to mobile with uh, a, ma a young a young man or a, a man in in Mexico Mexico City uh, that was kind of fun right uh, one of the very it's not the very first contact mobile to mobile with somebody in Mexico now that's not the biggest DX in the world, but it was mobile to mobile, which is just kind of cool. And I've had a couple of those. In fact, I've had mobile to mobile with uh, a, a man in Canada, and I've heard him a couple of times, and I've caught him a couple of times, and I was able to do mobile to mobile with this. And the tuning's been working great. You know, you go to you go to the band, um, find a, a nice empty spot. I usually go down to uh, to uh, uh, switch over to AM. I've got my AM on this this radio set to just five watts. And hit that tune. You can see I've got the TNR button. Uh, those th front three buttons on that 891 are programmable. You can make them whatever you want. So I put tuner right there. You saw the tuning cycle in this video, and I uh, don't have to get out of the car. And uh, it's a really nice system, right? Obviously, Yaesu antenna pairs up with the Yaesu radio very nicely, and you can use it with other radios, and you can manually tune it and things. But it's it's working out great so far, and. Uh, so I'm going to be continuing playing with this. I think I'm going to enjoy this because uh, I do spend significant time on the road. Uh, when I'm working regionally, I may be in the car an easy six, eight, maybe even ten hours, and uh, so that's a lot of time to uh, to uh, have an opportunity to play, you know, play on the radio maybe, and then wherever I am that week. So that's why this one made the list. Um, it was again a fun project. I kind of like doing this kind of stuff, and uh, it's working well so far. So that's that's always nice when it works out well. So that's, that's my choices for videos, uh, folks. Uh, there's any number of other videos we could have chosen, either uh, Brian for his list or, or I could have put on my list. Uh, there's, you know, kind of like all the videos, one way or another. Uh, you know, in the comment section for this video, let us know what some of your favorite videos are. And, and as always, don't be afraid to comment or give us ideas of things you might want to see. And, and if we can, we will may, may try to get to those, uh, you know, depending on what it takes to do that. Uh, we got plenty more videos we're looking to uh, to do uh, next year. We're uh, uh, preview. We're going to be heading down to Hamcation in uh, in February, down in Florida. Hope to have a lot of fun on that trip. And uh, so that's pretty much it for me. Uh, this is Chris KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.